So we're going to talk about water and solutions in section two. So what are some properties of water? Well, water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Water is very specific because water is able to absorb and retain heat without breaking the hydrogen bonds. Something that's also really cool about water is that when water is in its solid form, it's one of the few um, materials that actually is less dense. And that's for a specific reason. When the hydrogen and oxygen are starting to freeze together and they get really cold and the molecules are shrinking and they're getting closer, they trap air in between them. It's the same reason every snowflake is unique. It's the same reason that ice floats. It traps air. And the type of air depends on how close or far apart those water molecules are. Another cool thing about water is that we have a property called adhesion and cohesion. With adhesion and cohesion, the particles are able to attract and hold together. So cohesion is the attraction between water particles, like making a little dew drop on top of your hand. And adhesion is the ability for it to stick to something else. So like to the side of your glass, as the water droplets are able to condense on the side of your glass. These are really specific properties that are important because they allow for things like moving up and down within the xylem and phloem of plants. Um, something else is they allow for us to transport materials within our blood. Without water, our bodies wouldn't be able to function. Water is the support system for the human body. And then we're going to talk a little bit about solutions. Solutions are mixtures that contain ions or molecules. Remember, ionic compounds will dissolve in water. Um, and so when we talk about solutions, it's anything that will dissolve in water or a solution can be defined as a solute plus a solvent equals a solution. Dissolving is a really important thing. A dissolved substance will move easily in and out of a cell, which is really important for us. When you eat that cheeseburger, we're only dissolving parts of that cheeseburger and putting it into a solution. And then that solution is able to diffuse within your cells. Now, that's an easy way to put it. But really what happens is we're able to transport those small little molecules from that cheeseburger that we need into our bodies. The other thing that's really important are acids and bases. Acids are anything that have extra hydrogen ions and bases are anything that have extra hydroxide ions. So an acid would be like Coke, tomato, our stomach acid. It's really important that we have stomach acid, which is basically hydrochloric acid diluted, and it dissolves and breaks down all of our food through chemical digestion. Without that process, we wouldn't be able to enjoy that cheeseburger I talked about earlier. And then we have things like bases. Our bases are added actually within our digestive tract as well, in our small intestine. The lining of your stomach is very strong. We have extra cells in there to contain that hydrochloric acid. If you vomit, it will burn your esophagus all the way up because it has no protection for that acid. The same thing with your small intestine. So to fix our small intestine, we add what we call a buffer. This reacts with the acid and it actually allows for it to have a balanced pH in there. It puts a little basic material with it, not enough to cause like a volcanic reaction with baking soda and vinegar, but enough that it allows for us to not have digestive problems within our small and large intestinal tract. This is really important that we use acids and bases within our body to break down and build up foods and stuff. So what is pH? pH is a measure of how acidic or basic something is. The pH scale will go from 0 to 14. So with our pH scale, Pure water is around a pH of 7. Our blood is 7.4. So that's water is really important for us to have in there. Note, you can't change the pH of your blood by what you drink, but you can change the pH of your blood if you don't drink anything. So when you're dehydrated, your pH will change. So if you're severely dehydrated, your pH will drop below the 7 range, which can be really bad for you. If you are drinking just straight Coke, which is super bad for you in a different way, it doesn't change the pH of your blood. Your body is able to pull the water out of the Coke. However, you also are processing a lot more sugars, which is not good for your liver. You might be building up some kidney stones, 
which are not going to be fun to pass later on. Um, but it's not going to necessarily hurt you to drink copious amounts of Coke for your pH level. It will hurt you in other ways. Don't drink large amounts of Coke. Um, the pH of your environment is really important. We try to maintain homeostasis, a stable internal environment. And so in order to do that, our body has to maintain a pH. This allows for materials to flow into and out of the cells. If we have a pH difference, then stuff will either go into or out of the cells in a different way. And so it's really important that we have to have that. And that is all for section one. This is not the assignment, by the way. It is on the PowerPoint. I wanted to note that there is an assignment attached to this video in ck12.org.